man and he dwelt among us. He lived a life without sin and then died to take away our sins this morning. Aren't you grateful this morning that Christ came amen, to take away your sins? How many are grateful that he shed his blood so that his blood can wash away all your sins this morning? The Bible tells us he rose from the dead three days later and promised to those who come to him eternal life. That's why, amen, we are born again when we accept Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us what we've read. To them that believe in their heart and confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus Christ. To them he gave power to become the sons of God. The gift doesn't go unclaimed because the message is at fault. The gift go unclaimed because people have refused to hear the message. In C.S. Lewis' uh, book, Wonderful Children book, the lion, the witch, and the wardrobe. Mr. Thomas the Fawn tells the little girl Lucy that the land of Narnia is a place where it's, there is always winter and never Christmas. That is what I think of when I consider those who have never claimed the gift of Jesus. They go through the emotions of life always with the realization that something is missing. They live in a land where it's always winter and never Christmas. No matter how much people beautify, no matter how much festivities you have, how much nice clothing you will buy, and how much gifts you will get, if you don't have Jesus, something is missing. On this Sunday before Christmas, as we celebrate Christmas this morning, let us realize this morning that he is the good news. Are you hearing me this morning? So there is an unclaimed gift, but there's also in the message this morning of Christmas, there is unclaimed power. Unclaimed power. Imagine that you have never heard of, of, about electricity. You didn't know that such thing existed. And you, I invite you to my house, and I took you to my house. But I neglected to tell you about electricity. And so as you enter my house, you stumble around in the darkness unnecessarily because if someone had told you about it, you would have gone over to the wall and flipped the little switch and the whole room had the, had the potential to become bathed with light. The potential for light was there all the time. But since you didn't know about it, you walk in darkness. Are you hear me this morning? Today, the dynamos of God are humming. The generators of God is at hard work this morning. Because why I'm saying this? Because light is available for all who walk in darkness this morning. But some do not know this, where the switch is. So they walk in darkness when light is readily available to them. The unclaimed power of the gospel of Christ. I read a story that worth sharing this morning. Once the Ohio River was frozen. And when the, the ice finally broke up, it created great problems. There was a great ice jam. And there, the people was a, a fearful. There was a fear that it would destroy some of the bridges. And they thought about using dynamite, but they kept putting it off because they said... All we really need is two or three days of good sunlight, and that will do the job. Now, there's an enormous difference between dynamite and sunlight. How I many know there's a, a difference this morning? Dynamite makes terrible noise and shakes the earth with convulsion tremors. But the sun comes up without a song. And shakes nothing on the earth. Yet the soft, quiet power of the sun, they said, is more beneficial than dynamite. Does not song like the gospel of Jesus Christ. Softly, quietly reaching out its works and its wonders in the world. More powerful than all the booming focus of men. The power that it needed in our day is the power that Christ, amen, came to bring. How many people in bondage? How many people, amen, live in lives of frustration because why? There's an unclaimed gift and because of the unclaimed gift, there's unclaimed power. If you don't have the gift, you don't have the power, so you continue to live in bondage and in fear. And that's why God sent this precious gift because God do not want us to live in bondage or fear. 
How many know you send it so that we can be liberated and be free and operate, amen, in dominion power? Yet it is a power that goes unclaimed. So there's the unclaimed gift, there's unclaimed power, and there's also the unclaimed presence. There are people living in loneliness who could have presence in their lives every day. There are people walking all alone who need not walk alone. How sad it is to see the presence of Jesus Christ not claim in individual lives. You think our Father God is happy to see that there are people living in darkness. Do you think he's, 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 he's glad to see people frustrated and down and out? Living in darkness all of their lives? No, he's not. So why do men and women not claim the unclaimed gift and the unclaimed power? Why do men or women not have the presence? Why do they don't have the peace? Why do they don't have the power in their lives? Sometimes this morning it's because of doubt. If you were said to me, any one of you would say to me, as you were leaving after the service this morning, and you would say to me, Pastor, I want you to come over to my house this afternoon. I have a million dollars that I want to give you. I hope there's somebody here. Pastor, come over at 6 o'clock. I have a million dollars to give you. There are two reasons for why I wouldn't show up. First, I don't believe you have a million dollars to give me. And secondly, if you had a million dollars, I don't believe that you'll give it to me anyhow. But suppose for a moment that the promise was real. And the gift was real. And it would go unclaimed because I doubt the reality of it. How many people there in the world today who, because they wouldn't forgive themselves or anyone else, doubt that there is forgiveness in the world? Since they are unforgiven with themselves, they presume that God is no better than they are, that God cannot forgive their sins. They believe that their stains this morning is too deep. And so God's claim, great claims of forgiveness this morning lies there unclaimed because they doubted that it exists this morning. It is easy to doubt, isn't it, this morning? And how many people are doubting what God says he's capable of doing? We doubt the majesty of God. We doubt the awesomeness of God this morning. But I want you to know sometimes we feel that the devil is co-equal with God. But how many know, amen, God is the one that created everything. And how many know the creator is greater than the creation? Paul tells us, amen, when we read the book of Romans, he says, mankind have chosen, amen, to believe a lie. He says they prefer worship the creation rather than the creator this morning. We are not to bow to trees and the elements of this world or the things that were created. We are to bow to the one who created everything this morning. I hear me somebody. He is powerful. He is awesome. He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ever ask this morning. God is powerful. He is awesome this morning. Remember the song of long ago, I heard the bells on the Christmas day. That old familiar carol play and wild and sweet the words repeat of peace on earth, goodwill to all men. Then in despair I bow my head and there is no peace on earth. For it is strong and it mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Does it seem to you, beloved, this morning? Like the song says, that life circumstances mock God's promises. That there is no peace to be found. That God is not the living presence in our world. That he has abandoned it and us in the process this morning. That's a very common way that people feel. When they're going through the, the hardest of hard in their life, they feel that God has abandoned them. How many feel I mean, unloved when you're going to a situation and they tend to I mean, not feel the, the arms of the loving God around you? 
That's the presentation of the world that this God is, is not in touch with his creation. He don't love us here. He leaves us here to suffer. And so we doubt in what he's capable of doing. But we got to rise up out of the pit of doubt and realize that the peace Jesus promised was an eternal peace. I'm be grateful for that this morning. In this world that you will have trouble. But be of good cheer this morning. I have overcome the world. A peace that can be boldly said no matter what is going on on the outside world. With the presence of Jesus in my life, I know personally a love that is beyond human comprehension this morning. Sometimes it is doubt and sometimes it is destruction of the world that causes us to fail to claim the gift. That's our focus must not be on the things of the world. Yes, we all want money. We all want the nice things of life. But the Bible, remember this principle the Bible says. What shall it profit a man if he gain the whole world and suffer the loss of his own soul? Too many people are distracted because of the world that caused them to fail to claim the gift. We know about the gift this morning. We believe in the gift. And we really intend to pick up our gift one of these days. But we are distracted. How many people know, amen, and that you know, that know that Jesus Christ, amen, is the son of the living God. How many know, you know that they know that Jesus can make a difference in their life. But they fail to claim their gift. So the gift is being remained. Unclaimed this one, and they still live in the way that they live in, and they want breakthrough. It's time to claim the gift. Our attention is drawn to other things, so the gift goes unclaimed. This is a truth. If you can research it, you will see. They said that the, one of the greatest places for astronomy in the world is at the top of Mount of one of the mountains in Arizona. That is in the middle of an Indian reservation. They have picked that place for their mighty telescope for three reasons. First of all, it's because it is on top of this high mountain. Secondly, it is part of the country that is seldom they said, cloudy. It's always clear. And thirdly, they picked this site because it was far from any city. So that the light of the stars was not competing with the man-made lights. Follow with me this morning. Does it seem to you this morning, in this Christmas, that the star of Bethlehem, the one that the Maggies left their homes and falling, this star of Bethlehem isn't seen as clearly as it might be because the sparkling lights of our trivial concerns distract us and we cannot see it clearly. Those Maggies were sure there was something about the star. And they left their homes and their family on a journey that was dangerous to follow the star because they was not distracted by any other star. Are we missing the presence of God because we are so enamored with our own presence this morning? And so we can be distracted this morning. I'm here to tell you, the enemy will send things in your life to distract you. To cause you to derail and miss the purpose of God in your life. Amen. To claim the unclaimed gift and the unclaimed power this morning. He will put doubt in your heart. And distraction, amen, will come to you. So that you will not claim the gift and claim the power that God has for you this morning. So sometimes the gift is not claimed simply to neglect. This morning. How many of you understand neglect sometimes? Sometimes. I remember amen, when I was much younger. Like other children, they want a pet that I just wanted to mine fishes. So I got some. But it it wasn't because I go and buy it in a pet store. How I many know when they go in the drain, you see a lot of fishes? And so I went to catch some and put it in clean water and I left it there. Feeling to realize that I need to somehow feed them something. 
I just thought they would survive on their own. But I neglected to feed them. And I, I, I want you to know, when I went to look at them, maybe days after, they were dead. Why? Because I neglected to feed them. When we neglect the presence of Jesus Christ, it is not he who dies, but us. I want to make that straight statement. When we neglect Jesus Christ, it's not he die, we die. And if you find there are people that are dying, they may know Jesus, but they neglected him. And they're dying. It is not that we doubt his forgiven power. It's not that we are caught up in the distractions in the world at times. We simply neglect to take the benefit that is ours to the presence of Jesus Christ in the world. What are the consequences that when we doubt, we ourselves are made poorer. The sweet songs of the gospel come to us, but we stop our air. Spiritually, we close our eyes. We become like the people that Jesus spoke about in Matthew 13 and verse 15. For he said, for this people's heart has become callous. And they had it here with their ears. And they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might have seen with their eyes and hear with their ears. Understand with their heart and turn and I would heal them. When we love neglect this morning and we focus on different things our heart will become callous we won't be able to see spiritually again we won't be able to hear the true voice of God that's why many people are being robbed of their purpose fulfilling their destiny going the direction amen that they that God have assigned them to because why when you allow doubt and neglect and destruction amen to hinder you your heart become callous and your, your spiritual tree will not be able to see and that you will not be able to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Now you follow me this morning. How much poorer we are when we spiritually close our eyes and our ears to the truth of God's word. That's why people today will choose to believe a lie rather than the truth. People will fabricate things and say it is of God when it is not because destructions and doubt and neglect is taking effect in their lives. How it would wound God. How it offends Him when the gift goes unclaimed. There's a woman by the name of Cynthia Jelkman celebrated two birthdays every year. January 7 marks her entry into the world. And December 26 marks the day she received a new heart. She had a serious enlargement of the heart. And unless she had a transplant, the doctors believed that she would die. After endless tests, she got the Christmas present of a lifetime to receive a new heart a new chance for life again I want you to know on this Christmas season on this Christmas day it reminds us of our new chance of life this morning we like Cynthia can receive a new heart a heart that has been given freely to us from Jesus Christ this gift is waiting for somebody to claim it. It is not under a tree. It used to hang upon one. But he is sitting at the right hand of the father. Praying for you and I. How many today will claim. Their gift. Jesus. Is our Christmas gift. He is the truest gift of all. And when you receive that gift. Like many of us today, we may have received a gift, but I trust that you will not get distracted. You will not allow doubt to enter your heart this morning. And you shift your focus because of neglect. Because if we do, 
then our heart becomes callous. We will not be able to hear from God. We will not be able to see the true things of God. And we will live a most miserable life. But for you this morning who have not claimed the gift, you're not claiming also not just the gift, but there's unclaimed power, an unclaimed presence that can make you whole and bring true fulfillment in your life. This morning I speak to you today. Jesus Christ desire that we live for him. And when we do, we fulfill God's purpose for our life today. This Christmas day, remember when you're given the gifts, remember that God gave his best for you. I Henry. Over 35 years ago, I received that unclaimed gift in my life. And I want you to know when I claim that gift, I also claim the power and the presence to make a difference in my life. Remember, you are here, those who have claimed that gift, to make a difference in your life, in your home, with your family this morning. And if they have not claimed their gift, then you know that there's unclaimed power and unclaimed presence to make their life the best that God wanted. It don't matter how much money they have, how much houses, no matter how much niceties that they have of the things of the world, if they don't have this unclaimed gift in their life, they're missing out on the very best that God has designed for their life to be in. I want you to stand to your feet this morning. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten. That precious gift. How many would claim that gift this morning? So I want you to bow your head as the team gets ready to lead us in a few songs before we dismiss this morning. And if you can, this morning in the the atmosphere of love, pull that person here next to you. Join with somebody. I want to pray this morning. I'll ask those who are watching by the internet this morning that you bow your head right there with me. This is the season and this is the reason to celebrate. Father, this morning, we thank you, God, for this gift that you have given to us. We know many yet to claim that gift and we pray that even through this season, God, with all that is going on, Father God, Lord Father, many people after the holidays, they will be in death. Many people will be struggling to pay what they had paid for, Almighty God, through credit cards and so forth. Many people are still lonely. They may have everything, but they are lonely in hand. God, you see where we are, each one of us, God. You know us, my name, you know everything considered my life. Just like the day, God, that I saw that gift and I desired that gift in my life. And I claim my gift. I pray that those maybe here who have not claimed that gift, that they would claim their gift today in the person of Jesus Christ. God, there is benefits in claiming that gift. We have power. We have your presence continually in our life that will help us through each and every day of our journey. This morning, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you, God, for what he has done for us. That he paid the ultimate price, oh God. Oh God, Father, that Lord prepare the way so that we could get back to the place of dominion. Have the right to rule and to reign with dominion power. It's because of that gift made it possible. And I pray today, oh God, that your people will come to that place to believe in their heart what you have done. God, they will confess with their mouth. And to them, we give power to become sons of the kingdom of God. Touch our life today, God. Mend every broken head today. 
for beauty in our lives, oh God, Father. Oh God, you be our strength, you be our everything today. God, even for those who have lost loved ones, oh God, and it's a difficult time for them to rejoice in the season, God. You're the greatest comforter of all. And so we thank you, oh God, that your peace in the midst of chaos, in the midst of the storm. I pray, Almighty God, that your love and arms is big enough to embrace one person and you're also able to embrace the entire world. I pray today, oh God, we know you embrace us as Father and you work on us, oh God, Father, as our maker. Do the best that you can do in our lives, oh God, Father. Lord, Father, as we claim that gift, God, we claim power, we claim presence, oh God, throughout our journey. Touch our hearts today. Mend every broken hand today, oh God, I ask. In the name of Jesus. 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 Sing that song, brother. Hallelujah. Come join with us before we, we come to... I am no longer a slave. Fear. I am a child of God. Say it with confidence. No, I am no longer a slave to fear. I am. Come on, declare it. Oh, I am a child of God. I am no longer. My mother's womb, from my mother's womb, hey. you have chosen, chosen me. Love has called my name. Love has called my name. I've been born again. Come on, I have been born again into your family. Into your family, God. Oh, your blood, your blood. Your blood. Come on, sing it. Oh, I'm no longer. Hey. Oh, I am a child of God. Lift your voice and sing it. Oh, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am declaring. Tell the devil, I am. your life. I'm no longer a slave. <laughs> Touch Jesus for your love, your blood. Oh, I am a child. Here we go. Child of God. Child of God. We thank you, Father. Bless your people. Cover us with your blood. Oh God, when we spend time today with family, friends, with neighbors, God, with colleagues, bless the time. That it in some way, God, that we were able to tell them or share about the gift that we have received. To let them know there's an unclaimed gift with your name on it. I pray today, God, bless your people. Those who are not here, those in Trinidad, those who are vacationing, those in their home, whatever they face and the challenges that they're going through. 
we pray for them. We are the body of Christ, so God, we are the church. God, Father, we are your children, your Father. And God, we celebrate our big brother, what he has done for us and what he's continuing doing. God, even now, as you sit at the right hand of the Father, give you a spirit, and I pray God will continue to empower us, oh God, on our journey. As we go from this place, God, let the love of God flow. Let it be forgiveness, oh God, Father, will flow. Remove everything that has caused friction, God. And God, Father, bind us with cords of love that can be broken. Bless your people. Bless Kingdom Life Ministries, oh God, Father. God, Father, bless, oh God, your people all across the globe on this special day that we celebrate the event of Christmas. And God, we thank you because the seed of the woman will crush the head of the serpent. We thank you, God, that you have given us the victory. We leave here knowing that we are victorious, almighty God. And Father God, we are making, oh God, Christmas great in America again. We are making Christmas great, oh God, because we know what it is truly all about. Bless us, I pray, in Jesus' name. And God's people say amen and amen. As we leave here in a praise, I just want you to know, we meet back here on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock. And also I want you to know there's a special... New Year's Eve service starting at 9.30. The service starts at 9.30 p.m. But we're here earlier for a time of fellowship. I would like if you are coming, please come early for those who are driving so that we could occupy the parking that it may be available because we will have some competition for parking because there's a club right behind us and many people will be going to the club. I think, you know, so please come out, amen, so that you will have ample parking so we can enjoy our time and bring it in the new year. On behalf of my wife and of the pastors and ministers of the church, for the team and everybody, we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. Merry Christmas. <laughs>